I would like to welcome all of you to the White House. It's a privilege and an inspiration to be host to this distinguished gathering. In this room today are representatives of thriving democracies on many continents. President Manke leads one of Latin America's strongest democracies. Mr. Shavu Musa is the personal representative of President Shigari of Nigeria, Africa's most populous nation and a democracy. Europe's advanced industrial democracies with traditions of representative government stretching over generations are represented here. So too are Asia's new democracies. And we also welcome representatives of international parliaments. President Arelta of the Council of Europe Parliamentary Assembly, Vice President Ellis of the European Parliament, Vice President Townsend of the Latin American Parliament, and I would also like to greet the democratic leaders who are with us in spirit, only Prime Minister Spadolini of Italy who could not attend this luncheon, but who has sent a message of greetings in which he expressed on behalf of uh, his people well, he did it, I should say, not in sending a message, uh, in delivering a great keynote address to this gathering, which you heard. King Juan Carlos of Spain has sent a message of greetings in which he expressed on behalf of the Spanish people and himself support for the principles and objectives of this conference. And we are here today to celebrate a common vision, a vision of a world where right to self-government is openly acknowledged where the state is seen as not the master, but the servant of man. In particular, this conference is concerned with free elections, the very foundation of democracy. There's no more striking symbol of democracy than the picture of a citizen casting a ballot, electing a leader, choosing his or her own destiny. Earlier this week, elections were held here in the United States. I spent the last two weeks on the road working for votes and trying to understand my country's problems better. And so did thousands of candidates for local, state, and federal offices with a wide variety of views. On Tuesday of this week, the people gave their verdict in free elections. And the process is the same in your countries. The free flow and the open competition of ideas is the heart of our free societies. What a striking contrast this is with those nations of the world where the people have no role but must sit weakly by and wait for a small group of men to conclude their struggle for power behind closed doors and then rule without being accountable to anyone. But there's something else that brings us together today. It's an excitement that we share about the opportunities for the spread of democracy, the sense of hope about the prospects for the future. One of my predecessors in this office shared this excitement. General Eisenhower wrote in his personal diary less than a year after the end of the Second World War, our most effective security step is to develop in every country where there is any chance or opportunity a democratic form of government. To lead others to democracy, we must help actively. But more than this, we must be an example of the worth of democracy. Well, I can think of no better way to express the challenge to those of us participating in this conference and of free men everywhere than those words of Dwight Eisenhower's. That this conference is taking place is testimony to the growing power of democratic ideals. And their appeal has led me to suggest to the British Parliament last June that you and I live at a turning point, a moment in time, and when time and circumstance and the sound instincts of good and decent people can unite to redirect history, to bring about a new and more hopeful life for future generations. Some may see this prognosis as too optimistic. I do not underestimate the capabilities for repression of dictatorships of either the left or the right, or the devastating effect of terrorism. But the imperishable democratic ideal and the democratic movement, these are stronger 
has shown in country after country on the continents which all of you in this room represent, mankind has an unquenchable aspiration to control its own destiny. It's our duty to speak out against the evil and the cruelty of misused state power. Unless we speak out, unless we give voice to the decent impulses of mankind and our own deepest held convictions, a kind of moral atrophy sets in and we too may ultimately lose faith in the appeal and the power of our convictions. This conference is a further step in our support for the democratic movement. It's an opportunity to point out to the world that democracy gives to the people of each nation a chance to chart their own course. It's an opportunity to point out how free elections place the hand of the people firmly on the tiller of state how the free competition of ideas at the ballot box is an invitation to stability and flexibility that is so necessary for economic and social progress, how universal suffrage is the certain route to popular support for institutions and policies, how the accountability of elected officials is the surest guarantee that the people's will is respected and that the fruits of growth will not be channeled to only a few. All of these realizations provide a powerful antidote to those who argue that state power and armed might are the only means to social or economic progress. In case after case, we have seen the democratic states which rely on the initiative of their own people develop their economies and societies far further than centralized states. We must not underestimate the task that we face in supporting the growth of democracy. Democracy cannot be imposed from outside, and it frequently evolves only after patient incremental steps. It must be the product of free institutions, churches, labor unions, independent judiciary, and the press. And his life-giving, rejuvenating process is a citizen placing his vote in a ballot box, the subject of this conference. Your presence today already provides inspiration to those who believe in and work for democracy. I'm confident that your deliberation will be a source of new insight and wisdom, yet we must do more than note the lessons of the past and the challenges of the future. It is my hope that this conference will produce not only a new commitment to freedom, but a positive program for international action. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you success in your deliberations. And ask you to join me in a toast to our distinguished guests and most of all to our most prized heritage of our past and the most promising prospect for our future, personal freedom, the right to self-governing democracy.
Señores distinguidos delegados a esta conferencia sobre elecciones libres, señoras y señores. My dear friend, the President of the United States of America, Ronald Reagan, distinguished delegates to this conference on free elections, ladies and gentlemen. Es un inmenso honor para mi pueblo y para mí en mi condición de Presidente de la República agradecer las palabras y la convocatoria a esta conferencia por parte del Presidente Reagan de los Estados Unidos. It is an immense honor for me, for my people, and for me as President of my Republic to uh, thank President Reagan for his words and also for his having convened this conference. Asistimos a un acontecimiento de una gran trascendencia para la lucha de los pueblos por la libertad y por la democracia. Aquí se han reunido gentes de muy diferentes lugares del mundo, pero todos identificados con los ideales de la democracia. Aquí se han reunido gente de todos los lugares del mundo, pero todos con una profunda fe de que cualesquiera que sean las adversidades por las que de tiempo en tiempo pueda atravesar la lucha por la democracia, tenemos la más profunda fe de que al final triunfarán esos ideales en toda la tierra. So we have come to this event, an event which I consider to be of the greatest importance in the struggles of peoples for freedom and democracy. We are gathered here together, peoples from different places throughout the world, but they are all together in their identification with the ideals of democracy. People have come here to this gathering from all corners of the world, all of them with a deep faith in democracy in spite of adversities that might come up in each one of our countries from time to time in this struggle for democracy, we all share this deep faith that in the end there will be a triumph of democracy throughout the world. La definición de los Estados Unidos de América a través de su presidente y que dio el tema y el título central de esta conferencia es una definición de extraordinaria importancia para el futuro de nuestro quehacer a favor de la democracia. Es elecciones libres, es una definición rotunda y categórica de los Estados Unidos a favor de la democracia, porque no se concibe la democracia sin ese principio de las elecciones libres y honestas, del respeto a la voluntad de los pueblos expresada en las urnas electorales. And so this position adopted by the United States of America through its pres president of calling us here together and of establishing the theme and the title for this conference, conference is a position of the utmost importance if for the future in our day-to-day -day work in defense and for the development of democracy because free elections, uh, thanks to this clear-cut categorical positions of the United States, have been enhanced and this is a way to promote the cause of democracy because we cannot conceive of democracy without there being, first of all, free and fair elections in which the will of the people can be expressed as to the type of government that they choose for themselves. Para los que deseamos preservar la democracia y la libertad para nuestros pueblos, pero sobre todo para los pueblos que se debaten y se desangran en la lucha por alcanzar la libertad y la democracia, esta definición a favor de la democracia en forma militante y activa por parte de los Estados Unidos de Norteamérica es sin ningún lugar a dudas, a duda, la gran inyección, el gran aliento que estábamos necesitando en estos momentos de gran encrucijada para la democracia 
en América Latina y en el mundo entero. And so for those of us who want to preserve democracy and freedom for our peoples, and above all of those, for those peoples that are debating internally, that are shedding blood in this search for freedom and democracy throughout the world, the adoption is of this position by the United States of America in favor of democracy in a militant and active way, without a doubt, will serve as a tremendous injection, a tremendous source of encouragement that we sorely needed at this time in which we are at a great and significant crossroads as far as democracy is concerned in Latin America and indeed throughout the world. Y esta definición del presidente Reagan tiene también un significado aún más profundo y de mayor dimensión hacia el futuro. Destroza una falsa alternativa que se ha venido planteando a nuestros pueblos en la lucha por la libertad. Se ha pretendido que la alternativa en la lucha contra el avance y la agresión del totalitarismo marxista-leninista es la dictadura militar conservadora también opresora de nuestros pueblos. Al definirse categóricamente los Estados Unidos como lo está haciendo por elecciones libres, elemento insustituible en la verdadera democracia, está definiendo los Estados Unidos que la alternativa frente al totalitarismo es la verdadera y la auténtica democracia en favor de de la libertad y en favor de la justicia social para nuestros pueblos. And so this position announced by President uh, Reagan is a sign that uh, is very deep, that goes uh, much deeper than what I've said already and has an additional dimension as far as the future is concerned because it, it, it destroys what many people have been saying, that there, there is a false choice and that the people's face in, in their struggle for freedom, that the choice is only when you have the aggression and the advances of uh, Marxist, Leninist, totalitarianism, that the only choice for that, uh, alternative to that, is conservative military dictatorships equally oppressive of the people. And I think that the clear-cut expression of this position by the United States in the favor of free elections has been irreplaceable because it is irreplaceable as far as the development of democracy is concerned. And I think that the United States, by this expressing this position, has shown that there is another choice when you are faced with the possibility of a Marxist, Leninist, uh, totalitarian system, and that that choice is authentic and true democracy with freedom and social justice for the people. Si la democracia no se impone como lo ha dicho tan correctamente el presidente Reagan. Si en la democracia no se calca, no se imita, no se copia, no se trasplanta, puede ofrecer algo a la lucha de los pueblos por la democracia un pequeño país de dimensiones poblacionales y geográficas muy reducidas. Un pequeño país que decidió desarmarse unilateralmente, abolir su ejército y que ha logrado construir una democracia que no es perfecta. Porque en la democracia Siempre debemos luchar por la perfección, pero siempre debemos estar preparados para no alcanzarla nunca. ¿Puede una pequeña democracia ofrecer algo a los pueblos en la lucha para alcanzar esa meta extraordinariamente anhelada por los pueblos? Sí modestamente, no podemos ofrecer poder militar, no podemos po ofrecer poder económico, pero sí ofrecemos una vocación profunda de ese pueblo a favor de la libertad y a favor de la democracia. Y sí podemos ofrecer el haber derrotado falsas teorías pesimistas teorías sobre la democracia. 
Una de ellas se ha dicho con excesiva audacia que la democracia no es una planta que puede crecer en los trópicos. Estamos en el trópico, somos hombres del trópico y le ofrecemos el esfuerzo de varias generaciones para establecer una democracia que ha podido desarrollar. Somos un país pobre, subdesarrollado, y hemos podido consolidar una democracia, y hemos podido re rechazar el embate de los despotismos militaristas oligarquizantes que han maltratado a los pueblos hermanos vecinos, y estamos rechazando el intento del totalitarismo marxista-leninista de descarrilar esta tradición y este esfuerzo tan profundamente arraigado en la conciencia de nuestro pueblo. And so, if democracy uh, is going to win, as was well, very well said by President Reagan, we have to consider what is it that we are going to offer uh, a small country such as ours to this cause of achieving democracy. As I said, a country that is small, it is small in terms of population, it is small as far as territorial extension is concerned. And so what can we do? What can this small democracy of ours do to help uh, a country that has decided uh, generations ago to disarm itself unilaterally, a country that decided on its own to abolish its own army, and that has built a democracy, a democracy which we acknowledge is not perfect. Because democracy will never be perfect, we must always seek perfection, but we must we always realize that we will never achieve it and must therefore continue to work on it. So what can the small democracies, as I said, offer in this struggle for the, of the peoples uh, to find themselves a democratic system? I think we do have a lot to offer. It's an offer that we make with all modesty. We cannot offer any military power. We cannot offer any economic power. But we can offer the dedication and the deep vocation of a people for the cause of freedom and the cause of democracy. And we offer uh, the, an alternative that will, will cause the defeat, will represent the defeat of false theories that have been expressed in the past. Theories, for example, the claims of some people that have gone as far as to say that democracy is a plant that cannot grow in the tropics. And I say to you today that we are of the tropics, we are men of the tropics, and we offer this effort of many generations that have established democracy so deeply in our country so that it is deeply rooted in the minds and hearts of our own people. And we offer this to the peoples of the world uh, who want uh, to achieve the same democracy. And there are others who have said that democracy is a sort of a dessert that can only be afforded by rich countries. Well, I say to you today that we are a poor country, an underdeveloped country, but we have been able to consolidate democracy in our land. And so we, we reject all of those people that have been battering at us uh, from the military oligarchical despots in the past who have tried to attack the democracy of our republic throughout our history. And we also reject the pre present attacks at the present time of Marxist-Leninist totalitarianism that is trying to break our untractable tradition and efforts in order to continue democracy among our people. Y en la actual coyuntura histórica, la presente coyuntura histórica, signada por la turbulencia, por la violencia y por el asedio de ideas enemigas de la democracia, tenemos la vanidad histórica, la pretensión histórica de estar haciendo una nueva contribución. ¿Cuál es esa nueva contribución? Hemos rechazado la estrategia y el chantaje del totalitarismo que siempre ha pretendido y a veces lo ha logrado establecer una división y un distanciamiento entre las democracias de los países pobres y pequeños y las democracias de los países ricos y grandes. A base de esa estrategia han dividido nuestros esfuerzos han debilitado nuestras energías para defender la libertad y la democracia en América y en el mundo. Nosotros hemos rechazado esa estrategia y no hemos aceptado ni nos hemos acobardado ante la agresión que ha desatado contra el gobierno y la democracia costarricense 
el aparato de propaganda de la Internacional eh, Comunista por el solo hecho de haber creído que debemos buscar planos de solidaridad y de coincidencia entre todas las democracias, las democracias de los países fuertes y las democracias de los países pobres. And so, at this present juncture in our history, surrounded by turbulence, uh, surrounded by violence, there are attacks uh, presented by the people who are the enemies of democracy, and we'd like to have the historic pretentiousness and vanity, perhaps, to say that, yes, in spite of uh, the history that is past, we have a new contribution to make uh, to this cause of democracy. And you may ask what that new contribution is, and my reply is that we reject a strategy of blackmail that is uh, trying to seek and has achieved in some countries a division, a separation, a created distance between democracies that exist in poor and small countries and the democracies of the rich and the large countries. And this strategy has divided uh, sometimes uh, our efforts and has uh, drawn our attention, has weakened our energies that should be devoted to the defense of freedom and democracy, not only in the Americas, but also throughout the world. So this contribution is that we reject this strategy. We will not accept it. We will not be afraid, no matter what the aggressiveness is, against the government and the democracy of Costa Rica that is promoted by the apparatus of international commun communism because we believe that we should continue to make efforts to solidify and develop all democracies throughout the world and that we will defeat the strategy of dividing the democracies of the rich and the strong from the democracies of the poor and the weak. Gracias, Presidente Reagan, por todo lo que para nosotros, los defensores de la libertad y de la democracia, significan estas definiciones a las que he hecho referencia en mis palabras. Y me atrevería a anunciar que el pueblo de los Estados Unidos, también de una profunda y grande vocación a favor de la democracia y de la libertad, le agradecerán que con estas definiciones está dando la correcta y real imagen de la democracia norteamericana. Muchas gracias. Thank you, President Reagan, on behalf of all of us who work for the defense of freedom and a democracy. The position adopted by your government is extremely significant, the position to which I have referred to several times during my comments. And I would dare go as far as to announce that the people of the United States will be deeply grateful. A country that has such strong, a strong vocation for the cause of democracy and, and freedom will be deeply grateful for the position that you've announced so clearly, which has done so much to help and to present the true image of the democracy of the United States of America. Thank you.